What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to another pay-per-view point edition of the Smart Out Moment Smack Talk Podcast. I am your host, as always, Tony Mango, and joining me on the panel, I've got Robert D. Felice. Yo, yo. And Callum Wiggins. Who loves multi-man matches? Yay! <laughs> You're gonna get used to them once we change this pay-per-view schedule around a little bit. We get a lot of six-man tags and stuff. It's gonna happen. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know. Can't fight City Hall. <laughs> it's been stuck in my head. <laughs> can't fight Rock City Hall. City Hall. Yeah. Uh, so, if you uh, can't read and you don't know what the title is, this is our predictions and our spoiler breakdown or any other kind of information that we can run down as far as Elimination Chamber 2018. It is a Raw branded pay per view, the final Raw branded pay per view, at least for a little bit, because. The next time that we're going to get something that would have been a Raw pay-per-view, it's not going to necessarily be Raw-branded. Uh, we are going to get a fast lane thing coming up for SmackDown, and then everything WrestleMania onward is going to be both co-branded. So, hey, Raw gets a pretty decent pay-per-view as far as the title goes. Like, we Elimination Chamber, it's kind of a fun pay-per-view sometimes. Card itself? Uh, <laughs> well... Look at it this way. Fast lane usually sucks. And fast lane's usually the time of year where we get some kind of a random segment that doesn't seem like it's an actual match. We're getting that on this one. But we're getting two Elimination Chamber matches. We'll talk about those towards the end of this discussion. But the first thing we need to talk about, we only have, officially right now, and this is 4 o'clock Wednesday afternoon, we have four matches and a segment. One of them has, another match on top of that has been alluded to, but it's not been confirmed. They waited until Wednesday afternoon before they updated the graphics for the website to begin with. Uh, they are dragging their ass on this pay-per-view, and I don't understand exactly why that's the case. So we, we currently don't have a pre-show match announced, unless it's one of the matches that we already have, but that they just haven't announced that it's a pre-show, which either means that they haven't gotten around to announcing it, or that they don't even know how to schedule the pay-per-view yet. <laughs> this is a weird-ass situation, and I would not be surprised at all if 20 minutes after I start processing this video, they go, oh, by the way, we added this match and this match or some kind of thing like that. So if we are missing something, I apologize in advance, everybody. We can only prepare as much as we can prepare. Uh, they haven't prepared. It's on them. But... It I would say, more than likely, what match we're going to be getting, even though it's not confirmed in any capacity, we're probably going to get the Raw Tag Team Championship between The Bar and Titus Worldwide. First off, because Titus Worldwide beat The Bar on Monday Night Raw. Second, because on a Fallout video that followed, they challenged The Bar. And, you know, when somebody gets challenged in WWE, more often than not, that match ends up happening, and that's how it goes. So that's where I want to start off. Uh, the Bar versus Titus Worldwide. Two topics here, in my mind, outside of just who's going to win the match or something like that. And I, I want to start off with just something that's a little bit off the beaten path. But I talked about it on the hot tags. Didn't get a chance to get anybody else's opinions. Apollo. He's no longer Cruz. Oh, I think, I think uh, the Sun God is going to be quite angry with him now. Well, the the name of Apollo Cruz was pretty shitty anyway because it was just a take on hey Apollo Creed and he looks like Terry Cruz. Here we go, Apollo Cruz. But to take away his last name really leaves him in a crappy spot because the name Apollo makes you think of like some strong godlike figure, and I don't think Apollo Cruz fits that. We're talking about he looks like that's the one thing quality that he has is the fact that he's yeah, got the but body he's of a god. So small and that smile, I don't see him as threatening. You know what I mean? Like uh, he's definitely like you. He's somebody that could have used the last name, but he's somebody else that could have so easily fallen victim to WWE's penchant for removing different parts of your name in order to. I don't based on their own whims. They don't really seem to have a rhyme or reason for it. They just do it because they feel like they want to do it. They might as well just call him Uha again. You know, he'd be... 
they thought they had Roman Reigns. That, that's the oh. thing I was going to suggest. I I thought about this. Uh, the very first thought I had was, this is ridiculous. Just pure, just this is ridiculous. Um, but, yeah, Apollo Nation. Why not? Yeah. It, you'd have Titus Worldwide, Worldwide and, and Apollo Nation. Nation. Or, fuck, even call them Apollo Worldwide. Just Titus Worldwide and Apollo Worldwide. Or fucking call them Apollo O'Neill, for fuck's sake. Like, <laughs> to say that they're brothers now or something. Like, Apollo is... I hate this trend of being like... We had Alexander Rusev and Antonio Cesaro and Big E Langston and Elias Samson and Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. And, and Adrian Neville. Adrian Neville, yeah. I even forgot about that one. And it's like, well... It's fucking uh, if the whole thing's supposed to be that you don't want an association with the whole cruise shooter then what about the cruiserweight ah uh, oh it's cruiserweight oh we're gonna think they're the fucking shooters it's like they're the light heavyweight <laughs> division now like give me a break people are smarter than that you know uh, Callum was joking ahead of time about Tom Cruise, is he gonna fucking change his name? Maybe. And this is a topic for another whole thing. This is a, a mailbag or a all talk show or something like that, but maybe we shouldn't be talking about the fucking shooter. Absolutely. <laughs> maybe that like glorifies it, it. Like Maybe you shouldn't make it so obvious the fact that you changed someone's name because of the Florida shooter. Yeah. Which is like, because what other reason would you give? Man, I tell you though, Apollo Nation, that should have been how they should have done it. Yeah. And they, they're still chime. They could always just do that. You know, maybe if somebody's listening, they could be like, oh, Apollo Nation. Oh, I didn't think about that. Also, oh, I should add fucking graphics to my page and stuff. <laughs> like, but wait, real quick uh, rant too. Man, WWE.com, if you're going to be la- uh, lackadaisical on the graphics, that that's one thing. But you don't even update your 205 live results. If you want to no check on, it. well, if you want to check on what happens on Two Hundred Five Live, you're better off checking SmartOutMoment.com than you are on WWE. Sure. Like that's ridiculous. I shouldn't be better than you. You run this company. You have money. I don't. <laughs> I'm running this out of a fucking money. basement. Like, <laughs> how crappy does their website look? Do you remember how it used to look? Like it used to be pretty high end. I don't know. A couple years ago or whatever, they really downgraded the style of their website. Well, it's better than the uh, little handheld video text videos things that they've been doing with those promos lately. I don't know what kind of outsourced people they, they hire to do that, but man, that's I hate those. Or the video blocks, Titantrons they've been using. Yeah, I think so, so, Jericho called Titan them out on the interview thing recently. Did you notice that they changed that up right afterward? At least what? for this week? It was um, Jericho on a podcast. He said uh, that he is like sick and tired of the robotic interviewers and that everybody just sort of, I think it was uh, Austin too, that whenever it's like, I'll ask you a question and then you'll just kind of stare off into the distance kind of a thing. And then it was like this week we had the whole like, let's cut to rings, uh, the cut to a side little picture in picture video of Renee Young going like, Okay, and blah blah blah. All right, back to you, kind of a thing and stuff. I'm like, I wonder if somebody paid attention to Jericho's podcast. <laughs> they probably did. Yeah. Well, hopefully Jericho can then say something about the um, like the words that are appearing up when people are doing promos now on SmackDown. I really hate and those. So, yeah, nice. What about the raw graphics? Like they just the new raw graphics look so bush league. Like <laughs> TNA can do better. <laughs> it's just little arrows pointing everywhere and. It's yeah. so minimalist, like 2018, hey, we're a media company, look at these play buttons, you're gonna watch this on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Like, and they got rid of the intro, they're doing that thing again, which I hate, like, the intro to the show is supposed to hype you up, and it's gone now, and, yeah. Burn It to the Ground still was kind of fun, you know, I love that song, and it was just kind of like, getting you pumped up, just burn it to the ground, and uh, fuck yeah, we're all, we're gonna kick some ass kind of a thing now it's just kind of like same thing with, same no. thing with Shinedown like when they when they rebranded for the brand split I really enjoyed their whole presentation and now I feel like we've regressed back to the whole Tonight is the Night era <laughs> so Elimination
Elimination Chamber is not. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of weird things going with it. Apollo, that's that's one side little thing. Um, another thing to talk about with the Raw Tag Team Championship that I wanted to bring up before we even talk about the Bar versus Titus Worldwide. Technically, we have no match right now for the Revival or the Balor Club or the Good Brothers or the fact that they still keep calling them Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. They don't want to call them either of their tag team names. Fine. Uh, you guys think that this should have been Titus Worldwide versus The Bar, or should it have been some other kind of combo? And where is this going for WrestleMania? Because right now, those are the four tag teams. <laughs> you know exactly where it's going for WrestleMania. They got lucky and got rid of the Jason Jordan problem. So now we have the four, you know, bland tag teams. And that's... Actually, I like all four teams it's just right now they're being presented in a very bland way and they're gonna get thrown into a fatal four-way at mania maybe jeff hardy's ready to go and maybe we get the woken hardy's again winning the titles at wrestlemania but <laughs> I a cluster fuck <laughs> it's good. Hey, what did we do last year well, we had did like we... a you know cluster fuck tag team match and the hardy's won yep mm. <laughs> it's, it's time for that again I mean it's just it's pretty obvious that we're just heading towards a pre-show or like early show tag team triple threat or fatal four way match and so it doesn't really matter who the bar would going to be facing on tonight's show because they're probably going to win and head into Wrestlemania where they'll probably drop the belts to somebody but, don't you think they deserve better though let's be real for the, la- for the last half of the year they carried part of the main event scene on the brand and you know it got nauseatingly annoying but they were in main event matches with Rollins practically every week since August and now they're just like okay here's Titus O'Neil and Apollo not Cruz yeah it's you still kind of want to say Cruz <laughs> uh, I, think, yeah. I think they'll get their just rewards during the um when the, the new draft happens and they're probably put on separate shows and can become like single stars again but at the moment they're just in a situation where the tag team division's pretty dead on Raw so it's not their fault they definitely have been performing excellently toward, um, throughout the last like year or so but they're just not a priority at the moment so they're going to suffer because of it and they're not going to be too prioritized when it comes to those co-branded pay-per-views either because the tag titles are the first things that get pushed aside oh yeah Absolutely. Especially around July when we have four Money in the Bank matches, folks, because we got a Raw Men's, Raw Women's, Raw SmackDown Men's, SmackDown Women's. That's going to be fun. Well, I'm, I'm assuming they'll mix it. Yeah, I'm assuming that that'll be just a Women's and a Men's. Oh, you, you, you see. You'll wait and see. Uh, we'll have to wait and see because that's one of those things where if they do have four, they are just <laughs> lunatics. <laughs> I, have, I have a complaint about this tag team match. Is that I've seen it four times in the last month. Yeah, it's another thing too. It's just See, let's have a fight, is... and they they have a feud because they've been fighting. That's not a yeah. feud. That's just a re- repetition of matches. I understand this isn't the pay per view era anymore, where you're supposed to like have different types of matches leading into a pay per view. So you pay to see the actual match of the pay per view because most people who watch WWE. I'm not saying most, but a significant number have the network, so we're just going to watch the pay per view when it's on anyway. I understand that. But surely, if you watch a match three or four times over, and it's not even a particularly interesting match to start with, because who's really that excited about Titus O'Neil and Apollo? Instead, you've got to sit through that. You've already sat through that three times, get however many results it is. There's already been a tag team title match, which the bar won. And so what's the real excitement or the intrigue heading into this match? Like, What are people really expecting to happen in this match that they haven't already seen before? Statistics. Ted Antonio actually wins a match or wins a title. Yeah, that's just this is not a seller match. No, you know nobody's buying the pay per view for this. Nobody's tuning in to watch it. It's it's filler, and this is one of the two. Unless they add another match, this is one of the two matches that will be on the pre-show. It's just the way that it is. And for the people, by the way, that are referencing the idea of the whole co-branded things, this is not one of the first ones that's going to have that four-hour chunk of time. 
Uh, so we've got a one hour pre-show and we've got three hours of the normal show. Realistically, the Elimination Chamber matches are going to take up an hour and a half. Uh, they're not going to be an hour apiece. They could be, maybe, but they're probably going to be about 45 minutes or so, I would think. Because it's, what, five minute intervals, I think? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think the women's will probably be close to half an hour and the men's will probably take about 45 or so. Yeah, like, they, they're, they're going to take up the bulk of an hour a piece, so that's two hours. So you've got another hour for Oscar Nia Jax, the Ronda Rousey contract signing, and whichever one of the other two matches is not on the pre-show. Raw Tag Team title match or the Matt Hardy Bray Wyatt match, one of them's going on the pre-show, uh, and it really doesn't matter for either of them because they're both just pointless. Like, they're, Which is a shame in regards to Hardy and Wyatt, but yeah, pointless. Yeah. It's a shame, and it's also expected because they, they pushed this off on the side. I mean, that's not been a priority for a while. They both were people that just kind of... I mean, we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, with the Raw Tag Team title match, like if this goes on the pre-show, that's going to be even less people that give a shit about it. And that's going to be even worse going forward. You know, Yeah, less people in the building, too. Less uh, people in the Apollo Nation. Mm-hmm. Does anyone actually think... Oh, don't mind that joke. <laughs> anyone actually think the bar loses here? You know, it wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world. That's the weird thing about it. Because mm-hmm. maybe in their mind, they would want to put the belt on uh, Titus and Apollo for something like a shock factor. And yeah, then, that's... You know, maybe they go into WrestleMania with the titles and it's like the bar is challenging with their rematch clause, but the Revival and the Balor Club are like, hey, we... You know, we We're should be in line to... Too, damn it. Yeah, hey, we've got nothing to do. Just give us a break. Come on. Come on, guy. Like that kind of thing. And it's, it's the only potential like intrigue surrounding this match is that there's so few fucks given about it by basically anybody that they can literally just do anything with this to try and generate some kind of reaction. <laughs> they could really just kind of be like, you switch the titles around because somebody like myself will go, ah. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's... And then people just go, oh, all right, cool. Oh, yeah, we have new tag champs. Who, who were the tag champs? <laughs> that kind of a thing. Because <laughs> not many people know, really, who gives a shit, really, that kind of thing. Uh, oh, I, I wish sure hate titles, it, you know? Like, yeah. I think the Titus Worldwide pose would look quite good with a title belt on the shoulder. It would remind me a lot of when Primetime won uh, in the Primetime, Primetime players, emerging the Primetime players in Crime Time. Uh, when the primetime players randomly won from the New Day for, yeah. I think it was like two and a half weeks or something. It was a couple of months. A couple of months? Really? No, it was like, it was they, they won the from the New Day going from the Weird Elimination Chamber special to um, SummerSlam because New Day won it back at SummerSlam so I think they only had it for like three weeks. No, 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 no. They didn't win it in the Elimination Chamber. They, won they didn't it the win next it pay- in the Chamber, but they won it somewhere between Chamber and SummerSlam. They won it at the next pay-per-view, and then they defended it at Money in the Bank, and then they lost it at SummerSlam. All right, no, we're, lo- we're looking this up, because now I'm now I'm intrigued. Money in the Bank was the next pay-per-view, so if they you won can- it, they won it at Money in the Bank. You can't overcome my knowledge when it comes to like just random wrestling trivia and stuff like that. I'll literally smoke all of you. Well, maybe it comes to the primetime players, but... <laughs> Reign of Raw Tag Team Championships. Let's see. Primetime players won the titles on June 14th, 2015 Which at Money in the Bank. Bank. They yeah. lost it August 23rd, 2015. Right. So they held it for 70 days. Uh, That's about two months, right, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, it's a little bit more than. It's a hell of a lot longer than I thought it was. I thought it was like yeah. that they won it on, like... First off, I didn't remember it was Money in the Bank, but I, I thought that they had won it on, say, like, if it was June 14th, and then they dropped it on, like... July 1st or some bullshit like that. Anyway, that uh, that could be the case when it comes to this. It could be Titus Worldwide wins this just for some intrigue and drop it at WrestleMania against anybody. And it wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world. It would be something that we've seen happen before. Uh, okay, but if they drop the titles here, can we move Cesaro and Sheamus back into the singles division, please? They're so good, but they're forced into tag teams because they have nothing for them. They'll, they'll be moving singles thing. They'll have to split brands, I think. But they'll be back in singles action 
soon after WrestleMania. Uh, but to be fair, if they if they move into singles stars now or whatever, if they go back to the singles division, what's for them at WrestleMania? They're just going to be put into the battle royal. A ladder match. There isn't going to be a ladder match, well, at least not on the Raw side. I'm still thinking that's probably going to be the SmackDown United States match, but possibility. Yeah, but I think just keep them as a tag team for now, so at least they have like a title match to look forward to at WrestleMania if they're still together. Because if they're apart, then they're in the they're in the yeah. battle royal, and then they don't get any shine whatsoever. Hey, but well, who knows? Maybe Cesaro can win the battle royal, and it can start a huge push. Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Paul Heyman back as his manager. Well, I think this match is going to be bottom feeder type filler. Uh, there's a chance it could be kind of fun, but I don't think anybody's going to give a shit. And I am not expecting a title change. I'm not expecting this to be on the main card. I think it's going to be on the pre-show. But the hardy white match could be on the pre-show too so it really doesn't matter it's a bathroom break or it's a pre-show match that's it and you know if i gotta pick between do we get a surprise title change or do we just stay with the status quo uh well the smart bet is the bar but you know what i'm not gonna be all that shocked if Titus worldwide wins i'm about like like 55% the bar. Not that much. I will be very shocked if Titus Worldwide wins. I think the bar has to win it here. There's just no reason for them to drop it yet. Um, I'm looking, well, I'd say I'm not looking forward to the match. But I think the match will be good as far as filler matches go, but it'll be hard to get really invested when the crowd are just sitting on their hands, which is what's going to happen, unfortunately. And you're not excited about Dana Brooke crunching the numbers at ringside? <laughs> I think she'll be the only person with like her hands or anything in action. She'll be the only one like, looking at the match, really invested. So. She'll be like, um, somebody will be like, so what are you going to do this weekend? She'll be like, oh, I'm going to be on the pay-per-view. Oh, you're wrestling in the first ever women's no. Elimination <laughs> Chamber match? No. Oh, you you fighting like Asuka and Nia Jax? No. I'm crunching the numbers, baby. I'm standing ringside to watch my team lose. <laughs> and my match wasn't even announced until, like, the day of the pay-per-view, so... The saddest thing is the best thing that Dana's broken, uh, Dana Brooke has done in a while is stand there while Charlotte last night on the Mixed Match Challenge went, Hey, look, it's my protege. Hey, Dana. <laughs> Which is, like, that's so sad. Uh, let's move on to another sad match. Yeah. Uh, the other potential for the pre-show, at the very least, if it's not the pre-show, it's going to be a bathroom break, is Matt Hardy versus Bray Wyatt. This should be the end of their feud, but it's going to end in a whimper. Nobody is going to really feel like this is the end, because they're not going to go through all that much to really give it anything that makes it feel like it's the end of something. Back in the day, this would have been the type of feud that maybe it would have gotten enough attention and it would have been good enough. That it could have been like some weird gimmick match, you know? They could have had some kind of strange stipulation. This could have built itself up into a hell in a cell. Of course, you can only do that in a particular month every fucking year. Uh, you don't understand why, but that's a whole other issue. Uh, it should have led to another like final deletion match. Oh, I think it will. I don't think it's over here. I think it ends at Mania. It's some kind of final deletion. I don't think that they have the legs for Mania. Uh, there's a Maybe lot of seven hours. <laughs> yeah, but there's a lot of stuff. If you factor in just a like a, a quick breakdown, you've got the United States, the Intercontinental, Raw Tag Team, SmackDown Tag Team, Raw Women, SmackDown Women's, Ronda Rousey, Kurt Angle, Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, uh, Universal WWE Title. That already is nine matches. You got Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, that's ten. Last year you had 14 matches on the card, so you got room for four matches maximum of what you can do. And those four matches, uh, I'm I'm sure I'm missing something here. Um, Cruiserweight as well. Oh, the Cruiserweight, yeah. So now you're down to three potential matches, and one of those being John Cena Undertaker. Now you're down to two matches. Elias versus Jeff Jarrett in the guitar in a full match. 
We're, we're getting there, folks. So I don't think we're getting Matt Hardy, Bray Wyatt. I don't think that they're going to care enough about to do that. But if it does happen, it could be a, a gimmick thing. I would be more inclined to believe that that's going to happen at uh, Backlash. If that's continuing. Right now, though, like this match is going to be pointless. If it is the end of the feud, it's going to be lackluster. If it's not the end of the feud, who cares? This feud is quite upsetting, really, because it was one of the things that probably people were looking forward to when uh, Broken Matt Hardy first came on the scene. It's, if he comes back to WWE, WWE, he's got to have a feud with Bray Wyatt because it's just two guys which are like decent characters and decent talkers, but are more known for their surreal antics and being able to essentially where the rest of the wrestling world is quite not so much serious but a little bit more based in the sense of realism there they can just go as surreal and as wild and as imaginative as possible and this has been so uninspired it's basically they got hooked on the idea of matt hardy laughing and they just stuck on that for the entire thing so, yeah. oh god he got a video of him laughing got so many views on youtube so he just keeps laughing nothing else it's weird to me that they're doing a lot of social media based stuff with like the weird cell phone promos, but they're not letting Matt Hardy do Matt Hardy things. You know, you know the weirdest thing about this is they haven't gone weird with it. They've yeah. almost kept it too serious. It's They've, very straightforward. It's very yeah. wrestling. It's like back and forth promos, like attacks from behind the scenes, whatever, like interfering in each other's matches. Like, where's the, like, giant giraffes attacking things? Where's the dilapidated boats? Where's the fireworks going off in people's faces and stuff like that? It's, like, it's so boring. And by now, it's gone on long enough that you can't reinvigorate it. Now, no. people, either they like it or they don't. More people probably don't. So if you go, like, oh, man, there's going to be this wacky segment tonight, people are going to be like, oh, my God, this feud is still going on. Because you can't tell somebody, like, WWE's not going to go out there and put a little graphic on the screen that says... No, no, no. Seriously, we're, we're trying harder right now. I think the only way they could reinvigorate this and keep this feud extended beyond WrestleMania is that they add more people to it. Jeff has to mean, come back. And I, has, think, I think they will. Jeff has to come back. You need to have more people from the Broken Universe turn up, and White needs a new family. Well, I think the match ends in, like, a schmoz deal. Maybe Wyatt's about to throw Matt Hardy off the stage or something and here comes Jeff we get the brother Nero I knew you'd come we get to Mania which will be like a House of Horrors slash Final Deletion deal and if they really haven't learned their lesson on not to split up the Wyatt family the Bludgeon Brothers go to Raw in the the uh, Superstar Shake-Up or Wyatt goes back to SmackDown and they try to reunite the Wyatt family again because they haven't learned their lesson. But Bray needs a family. Hardy needs the broken universe. If they're going to do it, they have to do it right. What if it's uh, a way to bring back Hurricane? <laughs> well, then it was a worth well, it. Well, <laughs> But you still need the broken universe because you have to go back to the lake of reincarnation. <laughs> uh, this this is like this match is gonna be the worst match as well. Yeah, that's the other thing too. I mean, it's not gonna be the worst segment. <laughs> it's gonna be the worst match. Well, match quality as a whole on this show is completely out the window. I don't see any match being a match to write home about. I think one match is going to be good, and that's it. And that's going to be the men's elimination chamber match. Yep. I think every other match is going to be problematic, and in different ways too. It's really weird. It's like, like the Raw tag team. We don't even know if we're getting that fucking match first off. They still haven't announced it yet. So that's one of those weird things where it's like nobody's going to care and stuff. Matt Hardy, Bray Wyatt one. They don't have crazy good uh, chemistry together nobody's going to care it's not going to be the end of the feud it could be a pre-show blah 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 uh, some of the other ones we'll, we'll break down a little bit but at the very least if you've got like the important feuds going on 
if you were to throw a match on the card like a tag title match like that or the Hardy Wyatt one, you would kind of assume that, well, if they don't have the strongest feud in the world, at least maybe the match will be good, and I'm not looking forward to either of those matches. So it's really a shame. This pay per is going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, let's, uh, uh, we're let's really not. not doing our part in trying to hype the people watching or listening to this. No. But... Yeah, no one's going to listen to the review at this point. Let's yeah. get a little bit excited. <laughs> Nah, uh, listen to this bitch some more. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I mean, I, I know the match probably won't be of the highest quality, but there's always the hope that with these two characters that something zany or unexpected does happen. So, even if the match itself, from bell to bell, isn't that good, maybe there'll be some sort of, like, explosion or special effect that makes it a bit more interesting, or at least memorable. Really, there should have been a promo, and this just popped into my head of Maxwell, like, watching TV or playing in his playroom, and the spirit of Sister Abigail comes to him. And he was like, say the spirit of Eddie Guerrero. <laughs> no. I was like, no. oh my god, an old joke's coming back. <laughs> no, no, that's in, that's in the Sasha Banks matches. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, the spirit of Sister Abigail comes to him, he gets abducted, uh, uh, Senior Benjamin has to set the battlefield for massacre. Like this feud could have been so good, and it's gone. You know, like we've lost this feud. Well, I mean, would really you guys does... rather have the Hardy match or the tag title match on the pre-show? Uh, uh... The tag title match, because I I want them to do something with the Hardy match. I don't care what happens with Titus Worldwide. I mean, I just. I try and go along the lines of trying to keep the championships important, so I put the championship match on the main show, just because it's a title match and this match doesn't have any stakes attached to it. So, I mean, I think if the fact that this match has no stakes attached to it, and oh, I'm hungry enough for steak, but uh, yeah, oh, yeah, steak sounds, sounds real good. good. Yeah, steak no. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if this match doesn't have any like repercussions. My stomach just growled. <laughs> uh, I think you should just give Matt Hardy a win, and just make make this a chance for like just to at least pick up the crowd a little bit. I think if nothing happens and it's just a standard singles match, and the feud continues, then it oddly enough that it should be on the pre-show. If something does happen where maybe the feud continues and it's like Jeff Hardy comes back into the mix, I think it should be on the main show. But nobody's going to care. Well, and they've only had the one match, right? They've only done the one on Raw 25, which was just a throwaway because it was in the Manhattan Center. Yeah, it was like a free minute. Like, just scuffle, really, more than the match. So there's really nothing to base how good this match is going to be on other than the fact that Matt Hardy hasn't, it doesn't exactly put on the highest quality matches and <laughs> Bray Wyatt has been terrible for about a year now. So, Boy, what a year anniversary of his title victory, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to say, as much as we're down on those two matches, I am much more down on something else on this card. Uh, the fact that they booked themselves into a corner with Asuka? Well, there is that, but even more so than that, I do not give a shit about Ronda Rousey's contract signing. It's contract signing. It's I, d- I don't know what to why they think this is worth like spending money on the WWE network for to see someone sign a piece of paper. I mean, obviously it's not just going to be that. She's here and she's going to point goddamn you she's gonna point at the sign with all of her might she's gonna take all that ufc money and point it right at the sign right here's the the thing with contract signings i mean if you've watched wrestling for a year let alone multiple years you know a contract signing is not a contract signing you know that it is a promo that leads into a fight every single time Sometimes it's more entertaining. Sometimes it's Andre the Giant bouncing off the rope and smiling. It's very rarely is it an actual contract signing. Part of me actually would almost just for the sake of it enjoy the idea that if it would just be a contract signing, just because it would be like, oh my God, they had the balls to do that. Like if they actually have her come out 
and sign a contract, contract, shake a hand, and then fucking leave, I will laugh my ass off. I don't care, though, about anything that she can do here until they prove me wrong. Like, I'm expecting this to be Kurt Angle and Stephanie McMahon and Triple H at most in the ring. They cut long fucking promos about Ronda Rousey is so great and she's amazing and we finally have her on Monday Night Raw and and if Stephanie's in the ring it's on Monday Night Raw I fucking hate how she says that and Kurt Angle will be all like you know it's great to have you and uh, you're great and I love you and I forgot my line and that's the end of it welcome Sondra Ralphie to the <laughs> Can't wait to see you compete at the Russell Fest. <laughs> kind of thing. But Rhonda is no charismatic promo uh, type of person. No. So this isn't even going to be as good as when we have, which I, I hate too on pay-per-views, when we have like our pre-show is going to be the peep show or Ms. TV or something. I hate that on pay-per-views. This isn't even going to be as good as that. And the big thing that they're going to be doing is it's going to be some kind of confrontation with her and Stephanie McMahon. Maybe Triple H is involved. Maybe Triple H gets involved with Kurt Angle. Maybe they immediately set up the whole mixed tag match or something. No, stop suggesting this. Please. It's going to happen. And then we're going to have to hear about how super fucking awesome, amazing, uber fantastic this segment was. And we're going to get on Monday Night Raw at least twice, if not three or four times, Oh my god, did you see the fucking thing that happened with Ronda Rousey? She signed a contract and she did a fucking hip toss. Ah, oh, god, I'm coming. Like, <laughs> and I just don't want to fucking deal with it. Like, That's a great Michael Cole impression. Yeah, well, then it would have been, oh my. <laughs> yeah, Michael Cole is more, oh my. Vintage coming. Ronda <laughs> Rousey is here. It's hot Ronda time. <laughs> how, long is it, how long does it take before he says uh, vintage Rousey? <laughs> First match. Six vintage minutes. Rousey. First armbar. Oh, it's vintage Ronda. She's here. You might recognize this from her United Fighting Championship. <laughs> and guy, guys, I'm the coach. I work for ESPN. I'm a legitimate sportscaster. I've seen Ronda Rousey in a legitimate sport, and this is great, and this is why she's here. Well, coach will be like, what's it going to take? <laughs> Corey will spout out something about Mandy Rose. Mm-hmm. Um, oh. I just I I like Ronda. Ronda was kind of fun to watch with uh, UFC. You know, uh, I I liked kind of. I mean, I don't like UFC all that much. It's something where you get like WWE, all right, and um, we know it's predetermined, and UFC isn't. But for something that's the legitimate sport or something like that, it's fucking boring for the most part to me and you can watch a minute and a half YouTube clip and that's the best thing that Ultimate Fighting Championship gave us this entire year meanwhile WWE is going all fucking crazy and stuff and Ronda I I can sum up the entire history of her career of me watching stuff it's just like oh yeah like yeah she beat that person's ass and I go back to doing whatever I was doing and then eventually she loses and I'm like oh man Ronda lost oh okay She's not something I'm really all that invested in. So they're already, for my personal taste, I'm already not into this as much as what WWE wants me to be. It's their job to convince me that she can not only be something that I can be into, like as a celebrity, but also a main roster, a normal women's division competitor. And she might be great, she might be terrible, but you don't win me over with contract signing. You don't win me over with a promo, and you don't win me over with a hip toss. I don't care enough about this to be excited about it, and unless they do something interesting, there's a an extremely good chance that I, this is going to be the worst part of the night, in my mind. Some 30-minute segment dedicated to them uh, talking about how great Ronda Rousey is, only for her to really do nothing but maybe point. Maybe punch somebody once. Well, this is why I wanted Ronda in the women's elimination chamber match. 
I said you put her in number six. You let her. You let everybody know she's on the roster. She's not going to be like Brock Lesnar, even if you eventually transition into her being exactly like Lesnar. But at least win the fans' trust that she's going to be a competitor. She's in the chamber match. The commentators gush about how good she is in cages, and then she wins the title first night out. Boom, Ronda, Asuka, WrestleMania. With this, you're literally saying, especially with the match Tony keeps trying to allude to, she's a special attraction. She's only going to work the big four. She's going to fight Stephanie in her first match, of course, because Stephanie has to get in on the, you know, big hype. And then you just do the thing, which they do a lot with Triple H, of I'm going to have a big match. At WrestleMania, here's my promo segment the month before about my big match at WrestleMania. They did it with Rollins. They did it with Sting. I think they even did it a few years back with Lesnar. And I'm just, I'm not interested. I want to see Ronda be a competitor because, as Tony said, she can't really cut a promo. Let her do what she does best. Let her get in the ring. And just fuck the mixed tag match completely. And that's my thoughts on Ronda <laughs> Rousey. Um, I hope she points. I'm pleased with the fact that she's been treated as a big deal. And I'm pleased with the fact that she's been treated as a special attraction. Because, let's put it this way, I, I do appreciate the fact that people want to see her as a competitor and want her to be, like, legitimately part of WWE as opposed to, like, a former UFC star now appearing in WWE on a part-time basis. But let's put that this way, that all the stars that aren't former UFC stars aren't big deals, and they don't matter, and they don't matter jack shit. Whereas Brock Lesnar, he's a big deal, he's a draw. Ronda Rousey should be on Lesnar's level, because she has the potential to be a big draw, especially for if you're trying to transition women's wrestling into a more prominent position. So it's good that she has this segment dedicated to her. Having said that, this segment is going to be really dull, it's mm-hmm. going to be 20 minutes of Stephanie McMahon pretty much talking for 15 minutes of it, where she will probably say how great it is to have Ronda Rousey to join the real stars in WWE, how mm-hmm. like she's gonna, she can help Ronda get, shoot her way straight to the top, essentially trying to get on her side, but still trying to talk down to her because McMahon is a colossal bitch and that's the character mm-hmm. that she plays. So she'll do that, get on Ron- Rousey's bad side, Rousey will push her over or something like that. She'll flee from the ring, and then that will set in motion their feud. Basically try and make R- Rousey a, I wouldn't say like a female Steve Austin, but an anti-authority figure in order to yep. build herself up as a popular, build up her popularity. Because despite the fact that she obviously does have a huge following from UFC, in WWE the reaction to her is going to be reasonably mixed. Like she gets the big reaction at the Royal Rumble because it's a surprise that she turns up. Obviously people room with the idea but it's still a surprise that she is in WWE and so people are going to cheer that but then a few weeks down the line people start going oh maybe I don't actually like Ronda Rousey in uh, WWE because she's a UFC person and maybe she's not that good at the ring and maybe she's bad at promos and stuff like that maybe she, she won't deserve the push that she gets why isn't I don't know Sonya Deville getting a huge push instead of her why will she be getting the Wrestlemania match when someone like uh, Mickey James will be on the sidelines or whatever and so you need to they'll, they'll try and build her up as like huge as possible as like a big baby face star and it'll probably backfire because it tends to do when you try and get WWE fans to think something they'll tend to go the opposite direction um, the mixed tag it's uh, it's another case of like an ego driven move by Stephanie and Triple H which I'm, I'm familiar with it now, so I can't... It, it's gone to a point where I can't get angry about it because it's happened so many times that I know they're going to have a big match at WrestleMania, so might as well just get prepared for it. They're going to try and use Ronda Rousey's popularity to build themselves up into a big match. Well, you know so, what's weird about this? Why are we getting WrestleMania 31 again? Right. Be- because Why are they, we getting the... We had The Rock and Ronda Rousey and Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. We had Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Why are they just repeating the fucking thing? What, did they, like, just look back on three years ago and go, oh, I don't know. Yeah, that was pretty good. 
we had an Intercontinental Championship ladder match. Let's throw everybody into the fucking United States title and do like a ladder match or something. Let's. Who won the Andre Battle Royal that year? Was that Big Show? Big Show. That's Big Show. Is Big Show gonna return and fucking win as his like retirement thing? Be like that? Like, yeah, are we just repeating know. this? Like, what? I mean, I liked the set for WrestleMania 31. <laughs> that was I fun. WrestleMania 31 was one of the best. Yeah, the show itself was good. If you had to repeat a show, I would, I wouldn't mind repeating that one, but not with Ronda and Steph. I mean, the issue is that was the match they wanted to have. Like, you can obviously talk about the fact that it's probably going to end up being Ronda and Kurt Angle versus Triple H and Stephanie. But people know that they wanted The Rock and Ronda Rousey, and they probably wanted it all the way back at WrestleMania 31. And now they probably can't get The Rock. Because I mean, but they should try. Even if it's three years later, I'd rather see The Rock than see the Raw GM fight with the Raw Commissioner and her husband. Yeah, know? but see, I actually would argue the opposite. I'd argue that I'd rather see Angle because if we get The Rock in that scenario, The Rock's going to take up more time from other people, and we're also going to have to get a Kurt Angle thing. And then we're probably going to get Kurt Angle versus Seth Rollins. And I really don't want a Kurt Angle versus Seth Rollins singles match. Yeah, I mean, not after least... seeing what Angle can do. Before, I was like, "All right, that'd be cool," because I thought he could actually still wrestle. He's had two matches, and he he can't. Well, I, I feel like they're making it seem like he can't, because it wasn't even like he was that bad uh, a year ago or whatever in TNA. He was still being Kurt Angle. Then he got in the ring at uh, TLC and Survivor Series, and he looked horribly out of shape. He didn't look as bad as Bret Hart did, though. Like, I'll give him that. <laughs> well, Angle hasn't suffered a stroke, in fairness. To yeah, 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 that's true. Say, that match was never supposed to happen. <laughs> that quote-unquote match that Bret had. Ugh. I mean, this match won't be... I mean, it's, it's like a weird situation because Triple H has a tendency to have 20, 30-minute matches at WrestleMania, but if you're going up against Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey, who we have absolutely no idea how good she is in a wrestling sense, and Stephanie McMahon, who isn't a trained wrestler, then that match can't go longer than 10 minutes without it just really sucking. Yeah, this has to be a short thing. So that's another thing, too, is this contract signing is going to be building up to something that is either going to be underwhelming and too long, so it's bothersome, or it's pretty short and underwhelming. So When is the mixed, the mixed match challenge over? The it's week the, before WrestleMania, I think? Yeah, I think either it's the like week before or week after, I think. I think it's a couple days before Mania. I think it's that Tuesday before Mania. Because I, I just thought about this. Let's be real. We know who's winning the Chamber. Braun Strowman needs a match at WrestleMania. Braun Strowman was doing something with Triple H. How do we know it's not going to be Ronda Rousey and Braun Strowman versus Triple I H? Definitely, I definitely prefer that option, mainly just due to the fact that it gets an a star that you're trying to build up into a prominent match at WrestleMania, and he should hopefully either win that match, or he probably won't be the one that gets the the win as it's such as Rousey will probably force Stephanie to tap out. But I at least that... that... Go ahead. I was going to say, at least that puts somebody who you're trying to focus on in a prominent position rather than what ev- what, what's being rumoured is that he's just going into a match for the Intercontinental Championship with his... I look at that more as they never followed up with the Kurt Angle Triple H stuff and I don't think that they've ever followed up with the Strowman and Triple H stuff either. No. So in in different ways too. It was like the Kurt Angle thing never had a resolution. The Triple H thing never went anywhere. And then the whole Strowman teaming up with Ronda Rousey like, I kind of can't see where they would start teaming up and why Triple H would get involved. And it's like, they'd have to, like, do a lot of moves. But with the Kurt Angle thing, all they got to do is do it at the contract signing. Kurt Angle's there for Monday Night Raw. He could be the one of the ones that is like, I helped bring her in. Stephanie could be like, well, you didn't really help. And now that you're going to be on Monday Night Raw, you're going to have to listen to people like me. I'm your boss now. And then that gets the whole fighting thing. And then Triple H is like, yo, what are you fucking doing? This is our new signing and you're fucking it up, Kurt. And then Kurt's like, hey, how about a match? And then it's Ronda and Kurt versus Triple H and Stephanie. You know, it's a lot easier. You do one segment, you you, you 
check off everything. Yeah, it doesn't sound the most exciting, but at least there's simplicity attached with it. And the, I prefer, the one I prefer... weird thing is, with that, besides the fact that he's Stephanie's husband, I can't see why we need to force Triple H into this picture. Like... Because uh, he's the king of kings, uh, and he needs to be at WrestleMania. I almost feel like that's more of a Vince call than a Stephanie or Triple H call. Like, I feel like Cutter would Have be you fine. followed Triple H's career? Yeah, okay, we got into this when we were watching the same there. I don't think Triple H is that intent on burying people. And I, I just don't think we need Triple H here. I just don't. I mean, if you want to, you know, Stephanie with Nia versus Ronda, fine. But Triple H just does not need to be involved in this. Well, I'll put it this way then. Even if it isn't Ronda or Triple H or Stephanie that's pushing for this angle, they're not exactly saying no to it, are they? Yeah. And to be fair, they're the two people that probably could say no to Vince and that would just nix the entire thing, so they're at least complicit in his ideas. Mm. But I th- I'm not looking forward to this segment in terms of like the actual quality of it, but I'm willing to at least give it a chance and see if they do do something interesting or go in a slightly different direction. Maybe they start off the idea of like having Rousey and Stephanie as quite buddy-buddy rather than just running straight into the feud, just to give it a bit more of like, a build-up as opposed to just, okay, straight away, and now we have six weeks of dancing around the idea that this is going to be a match at WrestleMania. I'll tell you one thing, I, I hate to say this, because it's not going to happen, and I also don't even really like it, but <laughs> the only thing I can think of that would really make me go like, oh shit, I did not see that coming and now I'm actually intrigued, is if it's Triple H and Stephanie McMahon versus Ronda Rousey and CM Punk. That's the only thing I can think of that would make me go, all right, you fucking got me interested. Yeah. Now, now I want to see Triple H and Stephanie beat the shit out of this team. Because <laughs> you know? I, I don't want Punk back at this point, really. I, I think that Punk burned a lot of bridges. I kind of don't really support a lot of things that he has done necessarily in his career and stuff. And that would at least be kind of fun to see, like, the whole, like, oh, I'm a UFC guy now, and fuck you, Triple H, and, like, that kind of thing or something. Yeah, it's not going to happen, of course, but... Uh, yeah, I think there's a less than 0.01% chance of that ever happening. So. I think there's more of a chance that the Funkin' Honky Tonk Man comes into this segment than anything else. <laughs> but this Ronda Rousey contract signing is going to be, I think, the worst part of the night that is also the most overhyped. And that's why it pisses me off even more. I'm going to throw out two more just fun what-if scenarios here because they, they just pop into my head. There's always the chance that we get another guy like a, like a Lashley, you know? I, I just, if you can't tell, I just don't want to see Kurt Angle and Stephanie and Triple H in action. I forgot Lashley was, like, hanging in the mix. Or there's always the chance that she's like, yeah, you're on Monday Night Raw and... Ronda just takes the mic and goes, no, I signed with SmackDown. <laughs> you, know? you know? And then it's like, well, what the hell? And then, you know, we still get our Charlotte Ronda Rousey match. You know what? That's another thing to bring up, too. That, that's actually a good transition to get to this other thing, because we've got Asuka versus Nia Jax. I have written four articles, I think, about this at this point. Some of them have been posted, some this of them haven't been posted up. yet. It so there. it's I'm repeating myself a lot if you've read them all, but bear with me. There is no way that this match ends without some kind of bullshit. Yep, 100%. You've got the undefeated Asuka against the biggest woman in the company. The irresistible somebody, force. Yeah, the irresistible force. Somebody who, for all intents and purposes, should have been a champion by now. She's never won the NXT title, she's never won the Raw title, she hasn't been part of uh, SmackDown, you know. But for somebody yeah, who should have been built up as a monster <clears> and won the championship, up. it's weird that she hasn't. Like she's also getting a little bit of a push. She also has a built-in thing with Alexa Bliss. They're friends. They just kind of, uh, like, put that off on the side a little bit here and there. Part of it's because of Enzo. And I know people, like, for some reason fucking hated that article that I put up on Wrestling News. I have no idea why. Uh, I think that that was a hindrance to her a lot. But they have advertised this match more than once. That's the key. Specifically as, if Nia Jax wins, it becomes a triple threat at WrestleMania for the Raw, Tag- for the Raw Women's Championship. Number one, that implies Asuka is challenging for the Raw Women's Championship. More than anything else, that means she's doing that. Number two, the alternative is, if that's not the case, and this is just, Nia Jax will automatically get into whatever match Asuka is in, 
If Asuka challenges for the SmackDown title, that implies that Nia Jax goes over to SmackDown too. Or, the rule doesn't fucking exist. And if Nia Jax were to win, and Asuka were to challenge for the SmackDown title, that Nia Jax would just not be in a triple threat match. So they didn't think this thing out. Either they spoiled ahead of time that Asuka is challenging for the Raw title, or they didn't realize that there is no logical way that this does not change what they've already advertised. Even putting that aside, if Asuka loses this match by pinfall or submission, mm. she loses a ton of momentum. If she loses by countout or disqualification, she loses a lot of momentum. Nia Jax doesn't really get the push that she really should in that kind of scenario. And they have to do that annoying ass shit where they always say, well, she's undefeated, she was never been made to tap, or uh, she never was pinned, and that's going to be frustrating as hell. If Asuka wins, then Nia Jax, what the fuck does she do at WrestleMania? She can't win another match to get into a title match. If Asuka wins and she challenges Charlotte, then there's nobody to challenge for the Raw title. We don't need that next tag match, bro. It's like, this is... This is insane! <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? Okay, I'll rinse in with, like, a very just concise way of saying why I think the match is going to happen, because I think a lot of people put this kind of idea around, and I think it's the only way they can get themselves out of the huge corner that they wedged themselves into. Um, Asuka vs. Nia Jax. It's, it sounds like a big match. I, I like the fact that there's stakes to it. I like that compared to Fast Lane, at least the Elimination Chamber has a lot of matches that have high stakes when it comes to WrestleMania in it. Oh, Fast Lane's going to be so fucking bland. Yeah, I know. So, you've got these two people who really neither of them can afford to lose. You do, in order to try and watch this which I admit isn't the best possible solution, but it's the only one I can really think of. And the match go on for as long as it's been going on towards the end. You've already had the Elimination Chamber match because that's kicked off the show. Alexa, well, we'll talk about that, but say Alexa Bliss wins the match. So, that's like spoiler into what I think is going to happen, but you move into this situation where uh, Alexa Bliss comes out and tries to cost Asuka the match. She tries to cost Asuka the match, trying to help Nijax win. She inadvertently costs Nijax, I don't know how, in some point, she just like accidentally trips her up or something. Nijax like, gets called by Asuka, gets pinned, loses, she's angry at Alexa. Asuka decides that she's going to go to SmackDown instead to challenge Charlotte. Then you need to get a new number one contender for the Royal Championship. Then you have, like, I know this is hard to believe, but a multi person match for the like, Fatal 4 way or 6 person match or whatever to uh, choose to determine the next contender. Nijax wins that. Then you have your feud between Nijax and Alexa Bliss for the title. Man, I just hate that scenario because they just would have done the whole Mickey James, Mandy Rose, Sasha Banks, Sonya Deville, Bailey, and Nijax all essentially fighting each other. And then it's like, okay, let's just do it again the next night type thing. I mean, we are talking about a company that did Money in the Bank, and then immediately, and then two weeks later, did another Money in the Bank of the same damn thing. So, we're not outside the realm of possibility, that's for sure. I don't care, I'm not saying that that's like the ideal scenario, or definitely not how I would have about this, but is there really any other way they can get out of this situation without making one of those two look bad? I don't know. You can't loot, have asked, I mean, I feel like you can't do that. This is the same company that ended Charlotte's like, pay-per-view winning streak at Fast Lane into the WrestleMania for some god's, godforsaken reason. Like, have Asuka lose her unbeaten streak in a, like, before WrestleMania, or before a big show, just so you can squeeze Nia Jax into a triple threat match. And that takes a lot of squeezing, let me tell you. Yeah, this is like, <laughs> sorry. I think this all depends too on the Rousey thing, because I've alluded to this on the WrestleMania predictions things and stuff. They're, the three scenarios with the women this year are all dependent upon what they want to do with Ronda. Mm. If they don't do Ronda versus Charlotte, they pretty much have to do Oscar versus Charlotte. Because really, what else is there? She's going to do this match against Ruby Riot, and Ruby Riot versus Charlotte at WrestleMania would be stupid. And you can't do just throw them all in together and have anybody give a shit, because Naomi versus Becky versus Charlotte versus right, Ruby. What did they do last year? That's exactly what they did last year. Exactly, though. That's right. the reason why they can't do it. Like, they, they can't keep doing that a million times. They got to figure out better ways to do that. And. If you do Oscar versus Nia Jax versus Alexa uh, Bliss, or Oscar versus Alexa Bliss, first off, if you do Oscar versus Alexa Bliss, it's a, a three-minute match, and that's it. If you do that with Nia Jax involved in a triple threat, then that's at least more competitive, and th that actually would make a lot of sense because they had done this whole setup of Alexa trying to get Nia Jax to take Oscar out of the equation. They're friends; she doesn't want to fight Oscar, but Nia knows that she's being manipulated and stuff, so it's sort of like there's grounds for a triple threat there, you know? There's no grounds for Oscar to Oscar just be like, all right, I guess I'm going to beat Nia and challenge Charlotte. You know, that's going to seem so weird. We have to do quite a weird situation where if Oscar was to win this match, then there's like two weeks after Fast Lane as well. So what does she go to SmackDown in the two weeks before? Fast Lane match, or did she go after Fast Lane to when John said, "Okay, I'll be everybody on the roster who's challenging me for WrestleMania, or whatever." Yeah, do they do that same thing that they did before, where Stephanie's like, "You, you might as well wait because we've got another match coming up." Like, yeah, because like, we'll ask her to come in like to Raw the next night, whether and say because either she has to say that she's challenging Alexa Bliss for the title, or that she's going over to SmackDown. If she's going to SmackDown, then there's this like empty void period where she's on SmackDown, but she can't do anything like to build the feud with Charlotte for WrestleMania because we don't know if Charlotte's going to be the champion or not. So, it just makes it a little bit more awkward. I guess that's the having like a co brand pay for it. And then on top of that, you also deal with the whole idea that if. Charlotte and Ruby Riot are going to be fighting each other, and Oscar says, I'm going to go over to SmackDown. Everybody knows that. I mean, everybody knows that Ruby Riot's not going to be Charlotte as it is, but then it would be like, okay, well, then it's obvious Charlotte's not going to lose right now. And you have to wait until after Smack, uh, SmackDown's pay per view to get to a point where you can start building Oscar versus Charlotte. And you know what they'll do? They'll have this sort of like, well, the, uh, the story I'll have building into WrestleMania is that Oscar was on SmackDown, so she has to, and so all young women are annoyed that she's moved over and taken what they could have had a championship match. So she's basically just going to be all the SmackDown women in the course of like a couple of weeks to cement herself as the top challenger to play Charlotte. And then what do you do when Oscar wins the title? Because she's already beaten all the women <laughs> on SmackDown. We only have a couple of weeks as it is, though. Yeah. You only have it's March 11th, I think, it's Vaseline. So you have less than a month to set up everything you need to set up between Oscar and Charlotte. While also trying to figure out how you can get Nia Jax back into the Raw title situation, or Ronda Rousey, if that's not the case, but I'm assuming that's a that mixed tag match. And then, if you do Ronda Rousey versus Alexa Bliss, what do you do with Nia Jax? She just doesn't do anything, neither does Bailey or Sasha Banks or anything like that, and Sasha and or, Asuka and Charlotte just kind of fast-track themselves to a feud, all because you needed to rearrange everything for Ronda Rousey to win a title. If you don't do that with a title, then you need to do Asuka Charlotte, because there's nobody better for Charlotte on the Raw, or the SmackDown roster, which means you can't do Asuka versus uh, Alexa, which means you need to do Nia, which means Nia needs to win this, which means Asuka loses. <laughs> it's like
I don't see why the move to Monday nights would be any more in the favor of Nia. Well, I don't, I, I don't understand. Like, they didn't really give a good explanation as to why Nia Jax is in this match and not in the Chamber. No, they, listen, for all the hype about women's revolution and women's wrestling, listen, they're, they're the same poorly booked crop of random females that they've always been. It's just now we're putting them in bigger matches because, hey, we have a talented roster and we can't get around it. The women are, are going to end up in clusterfuck matches at WrestleMania anyway because the men end up in terrible clusterfuck matches. They're going to end up doing the thing where you have Sasha and Bailey on the pre-show for God knows whatever reason. They're going to try to force Nia into this Raw title match. I think it'll end up being... Uh, a three-way, if not a four-way, if they don't just decide, hey, Ronda, here's a title match in a four-way. But they've really put themselves into just a horrible position here. Nia should have just been in the chamber. You know, she could have won the chamber. Alexa could have mandated her rematch, and there's your three-way right there with, without the extra steps of possibly costing Asuka. Look, like, that's pretty simple. <laughs> the undefeated streak that, you know, you built her up for two and a half years. So why, why are we here? Why, why are we doing this? Um, as far as will Asuka go to SmackDown, it'd be really stupid at this point if she did. Why is she having this match? She could have just said, hey, I don't want to fight Nia Jax. Uh-oh, I'm going to SmackDown. Yeah, there's, no, there's nothing for her. Yeah, she can only lose in this scenario. I mean, it, it's really poorly arranged. There's zero logic here. Unless there's something that we're not seeing. Like, maybe they, they have some kind of a weird-ass plan. And it makes no sense because we don't know that there's, like, these five other elements to it, you know? Like, maybe, like maybe they are not doing the Superstar shakeup after Mania. Maybe they're doing it before Mania. Or, like, you know, like, one of those weird things. Like, it wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, really fucking over WrestleMania. They'd, like, the entire roster switch around almost. Right. But none of it would make any sense, but then nothing does. And it's almost like they have forced themselves to say, we either need to write Nia Jax off as not an option and also kind of hurt Raw, or we need to write Nia Jax off as not an option and hurt SmackDown, or we need to write off Asuka and hurt her. But then we're also talking about a company that hasn't used Shinsuke Nakamura since he won the fucking Royal Rumble. <laughs> Word. I, I didn't even think about that. He I, hasn't been on SmackDown, no, I think. He's still, he comes on the first episode back, and then he's been gone for the last two weeks. Well, because they had him announce the name, they did the exact opposite of Asuka. They had him announce the name AJ Styles, and then proceeded to book AJ Styles in a fatal five way where you're supposed to pretend like maybe Dolph Ziggler will win this match. And it's, it's the exact opposite of Asuka. They haven't said anything, and now we're risking losing the undefeated streak. I have no idea what's going on here, and it's. I, I, I can't even predict exactly what. I would have to say, if I have to guess, Asuka wins over Nia Jax. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, like, don't be honest, honest. <laughs> if you don't be honest as well, I'm just wondering what the Royal Rumble happens to defend their spot than the IP before. Like WrestleMania. Surely you won the Rumble, that earns your rights here. It's not like she's defending a spot, she's coming in that regardless, but she has to defend the fact that she earned the rights to place a one on one. Like, this is a project that's been going on far too long in WWE, but the Royal Rumble winner has to go through another hurdle. It only makes sense spot. if there's some kind of controversy in the Rumble itself. Exactly. Like, yeah, the, yeah, the Rocky Beach thing, where something. Yeah, there's like the Rocky Beach thing where Goss beat the, the round first, but it wasn't seen by the referee. If it's something like that, then yeah, that makes sense. But in this case, Asuka didn't even, it wasn't even, like, Nia Jax was eliminated pretty not early on, but she, she wasn't even in like, the top 10 or whatever. Which again goes into why isn't Nia Jax just in the chamber? Either way, I wasn't thinking this until we just spoke about these last two seconds. I'm now convinced that Mickey James, or Mandy Rose, or even Bailey gets their ass jumped before the chamber, and Nia Jax. E yeah, see, that's another thing I wanted to bring up. I'm glad you brought it up. That's a good transition to, to go with it, because that, that's one of the only ways I can see out of this. Asuka beats Nia Jax, maybe through distraction by Alexa Bliss. Maybe it's an unintentional thing. Maybe she just flat out beats her. You know, possibility. Or you know what? Maybe it could be one of those things where Asuka wins because there's some kind of like count out. So it keeps Nia looking strong. And we do the Raw Women's Elimination Chamber match afterward. Nia bitches and complains to Kurt Angle backstage, and she goes like, this is bullshit, I didn't fucking lose that match, I deserve to get another chance. And he goes, well, I don't know what to tell you, I didn't read the script. <laughs> and then, uh, we get, maybe Mickey, I mean, maybe Bailey, maybe Sasha, who knows, somebody can get jumped, Nia takes their place, Nia wins the championship. Hold on a second, does somebody need to get jumped? Because we either, we should have an extra pod, right? There's gonna be seven men in that Raw Men's Chamber, so... But they, they actually could justify it that way. They could say, look, there's seven men in uh, that one. Why can't there be seven men, uh, seven men in the women's one? Why can't, there, why can't there be seven women in that one? They could justify it that way. And then in that scenario, Naya wins the title. And then you've got a triple threat because Alexa is the champion that gets the rematch clause. Naya is the champion. Asuka has the title shot. The only question at that point is, what do you do with Charlotte? Then you have to do the Ronda Rousey thing. Which, no. if you do the Ronda Rousey thing, then she can't sign the Raw contract. Or you do clusterfuck Charlotte versus everybody. And who gives a shit, you know? In, in the Queen's open invitational fucking women's match, um... But nobody's gonna care if it's like Becky versus Charlotte. That's gonna be you might as well put it on the pre-show. Yeah, what if it's sensible? Like, if Nia Jax was to you was to go that way, I'm not saying that's definitely not an option. But you must get sensible. Like if that was to happen, and these guys are just so desperate for a triple threat match to happen, this championship. Like it was, it was like so you've got such a roundabout way of doing this. You must be desperate for this triple threat match to happen. Like why is it so important that these three women fight for the title? Or something? Surely can't one of these two have a single match instead? Like why are you so so like, hell bent on having to be a multi-person match? Well, because I, they've been building this story since December, but you couldn't do it at the Rumble because we had to have a historic women's Rumble, and you couldn't do it in this month because we had to have a historic women's chamber. I understand the story, but. You need to have it as just one on one. You can't just throw the Royal Rumble winner into this story because then it's like the real story is between Nia Jackson and Alexa's friendship on and off again friendship, and then you're just throwing the Royal Rumble as like an afterful into I it. Which should be Asuka's story. That's more so, I think, because if they. Well, I mean, you look at like the crop of women that are in WWE right now. You've got Alexa Bliss is at the top. Mm -hmm. uh, she's not going to be at the top for long because she's got Nia Jax, Asuka, Ronda Rousey, Charlotte. Those are the other ones that are really fighting for that top spot. Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, they'll hang around the same as what Naomi is and Natalia and whatnot. Carmella still has that money in the bank. Mm -hmm. We don't know what is happening with that. Carmella is not beating.
are going to put that belt on Ronda at some point this year. And so, yeah. she is going to have three real matches that she really is built up to, and that's Nia Jax, Asuka, and Charlotte. Those are the three main matches for Ronda Rousey. Because even though it's like Ronda versus Sasha, that'll just be like a regular thing. That'll be, this is really, really important for, I was going to say Battle Ground, the Battle Ground doesn't exist anymore. Um, you know, this is our big match that we're going to be having for the Raw or the SmackDown Tag, uh, tag Team Championship. I don't want to get the tag titles already. Um, you know, Ronda goes into a match at, say, Money the Bank or something like that against Sasha Banks. And she has her match against Bailey, and she has her match against Becky, and then eventually builds up to a Charlotte thing or something like that. Like, that's what the case is going to be. So it's almost like you have to have Asuka and Ronda on separate shows. Which, if Ronda is going to be on Raw, Asuka has to go over to SmackDown. Which means Asuka doesn't need to win this match against Nia Jax. Which means she can't win the match at, at WrestleMania. Unless you are fine with doing Asuka versus Ronda and immediately having one of them lose. Like a backlash? You think they just throw right. it out? Like, like, they can't do that. So I think this has to be Asuka has to not fight for the Raw title. She has to fight Charlotte. Yeah, she does. Asuka needs to go to SmackDown. You know what's so depressing about this is we put a lot of thought into all of these things, and I guarantee you, it won't even be a fraction. Of this intriguing, like I'll just oh look, Nia Beater. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I got a feeling we put more thought into this than they did. Yeah, I can imagine so. But let's let's concentrate on the actual like women's. Women's match. chamber match itself. We're all going with Alexa Bliss winning, right? Unless there's a weird thing going on with like Oscar, Nia Jax, Ronda Rousey. It yeah. has to be Alexa winning. It has to be. But... I mean, by the way, we didn't say it. So are we like just all gonna not suggest anything for Oscar and Nia, or do we all think Oscar's gonna win this? I think under your head you have to go Oscar. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm convinced it's the Oscar. I, just, I think like my scenario of Bliss accidentally costing Nia is the way they're gonna go about it. But yeah, I think Oscar's gonna win, so Bliss is gonna win this match. Yeah, I, I mean, there's think a lot. It. There's a lot of intriguing stories going into this. I mean, as I say intrigue, it's been. A reasonably good story. I don't, I don't want to shit over really the idea of Alexa Bliss trying to get on Mickey James' good side so she has an ally going into this match. So you kind of know they're probably going to be the last two and Bliss is just going to be all, they're going to be two of the final three. Bliss is going to turn on her or something just to like steam team out of nowhere. Yeah, she has things. to pin Mickey. Yeah. Because it's, I mean, I would give them credit for this. They actually thought enough ahead of time to say Bailey and Sasha will probably team up. Sonya and Mandy will probably team up. It'd be kind of fun if Alexa was like, hey, Mickey, we used to be a team. Why don't we team up and make it 2 1 2 1 2? That was actually smart. Yeah. I like that. And then there's also the underlying tension between Bailey and Sasha Banks as well in that yeah. they've been having a few like conferences with each other and they had a match recently. So I think one of them should eliminate the other. And uh, probably should have one. With the Rumble. Sasha eliminated Bailey. Yes, yeah, Sasha. So Bailey will probably eliminate Sasha here. Well, Bailey got a win over her on Raw, though. So I think the one who should pin, well, the one who eliminates the other one should be on the turning heel. So if you're going to turn Sasha heel, she should be the one that eliminates Bailey. I, I want these two in a more prominent role, and I know I have to wait until WrestleMania season's over to get that. But Bailey and Sasha, two out of three falls at WrestleMania, would probably go on the pre show, but he deserves more than that. You know what I mean? They, they've, they're definitely, in terms of the quality of their performances in the matches that they're capable of putting on, probably compared to basically every other match that is going to have a prominent position in the women's roster, it's probably a high standard, but they're just not quality. And I kind of don't care to see it. I mean, have you seen it Bailey? Yeah. <laughs> it's not seen enough, but like what have they done since it's been I mean Sasha Banks won the big championship like four times, but she's never held it long enough to really care. She's never held it long enough to be a champion. I, I guess they really squandered them last year with, you know, the random again forcing Naya into the Raw title match with that for me last year. That was a very dull match and I had a high hopes for that. Going it should have been one one. It should have been Bailey versus Sasha on that one. Yeah. Or so what what Richard happened is that Charlotte should have been defending against Bailey and Bailey should have won WrestleMania, but doesn't even hit all there, really. But in in this situation you, you kinda of, it doesn't make sense for any of the other five people to win the women's championship. Like there's only no. one that should hold the title going to WrestleMania because Alexa Bliss, even though, so I've had like, my doubts about Alexa Bliss' ability within the ring and her progression in that area of wrestling, but she's obviously the biggest star the person you've built up the most over the course of the year, so she should ideally walk into WrestleMania, at least in the championship match, if not the champion like herself. That's, that's why I see this match going. I mean, at the very least, we can rule out Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville as having absolutely zero chance whatsoever. There's absolutely no, no chance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's no way. There's more of a chance that Mickey or Sasha or Bailey wins, but even the three of them, they're not going to win. Unless there's some Paige wrestles again. Yeah, I, I, there's actually more of a chance that Paige wins this than Mandy Rose or Sonya Deville, oddly enough. It's weird. This is Alexa Bliss's win, and I would love to see Alexa win being like going from start to finish and getting a little bit of credibility. But I'm okay with her as a heel character being like the fifth or maybe even the sixth person and winning that way and kind of being like the cheat. You know, Bailey and Mickey were fighting their asses off and Andy came in and then Sasha came in and then Sonya came in and these five women are really fighting out crazy and then Alexa comes in and picks the bones. Like, I'd be cool with that. You know, she's a heel. She's yeah, the best character. But this is definitely Alexa winning. We're all going with Alexa, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Unless there's some kind of weird thing with Nia getting involved. Yeah, that's yeah. Or, or Ronda. We're, yeah, we're Ronda. We're fucking Ember Moon for all we goddamn know. <laughs> the way that they're doing this guy. Basically, out of these six people in this match, Alexa is getting on the with Definitely. Now with the men's. This is match I think is going to be the best match of the night. I think this is where we're going to see the actual spots happen. Um, we were talking a little bit about this ahead of time just before we even started recording stuff about the idea of like who's going to do what in different things. Uh, this is the one last thing I want to mention about the Raw Women's Championship match. I hope Sasha doesn't get injured. Yeah, I hope so. She's just, yeah. she's just she's gonna gonna something. She might try to kill herself just to be as up there as the men's. I imagine she's going to try to hit a little smash from the top. But... I was thinking Bailey tries to hit the elbow off the top. But yeah, I can see her trying to go for a front smash. Hmm. But we'll see it works out for RBD though, so I hope she doesn't do it. <laughs> but we'll see a lot more of that stuff in the men's, especially when you've got people like Seth Rollins and Finn Balor in the match. They're going to be doing something that's reasonably spectacular. Well, but, with, with the people that are involved, for the people that don't know who's involved, let's just toss out those names right now. In alphabetical order, we've got Braun Strowman, Elias, Finn Balor, John Cena, The Miz, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins. We've got seven people this year. First things first, we know we're starting with three men instead of two. Have they been confirmed? Yeah, they said that on the Monday Night actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I, think, think it. I think it was Cole was just sort of like, and this year we're going to be having three men start off in the chamber instead. Oh, that's why they can't drown out Cole. Yeah. So we
in there because if he has nothing else better to do, maybe they want to give him a prominent spot at the beginning of it. I kind of like that. Well, I think that there's a couple things that could happen here, and there's some ways that I think that this can factor into WrestleMania, depending on what their plans are. Um, I'm hoping that Finn Balor pins John Cena. Uh, I, I would like to see that happen to get him a little bit of a, a boost back up from losing to Cena. It might not happen. If Cena, well, Cena's gonna get eliminated. If he gets eliminated, I think it's only gonna be from three people. It's either gonna be Braun Strowman, Finn Balor, or Roman Reigns. I don't think Elias is getting that pin. What are you talking about? Elias has beaten him up like every time they've interacted. They haven't been interacting as much lately, though. I think that they're past it. Uh, um, I would love to see Finn Balor and The Miz at WrestleMania against each other for the Intercontinental title, as opposed to Strowman and The Miz. So, it's either Strowman or Balor that pins The Miz, I think. And if The Miz gets a pin on anybody, I think he can only get a pin on Seth. I don't know about a lot of the other things that are happening here, though. And before we talk about the who's going to win and stuff, what kind of feuds do you think could come out of this? Any kind of, like, this can spawn this by this person pinning that person, anything like that come to your guys' minds? Because Balor Miz is one of the only ones I can think of. The Balor Miz is probably the biggest way they go, or they go Miz Seth, if they want Seth to the I think Seth. Miz is rolling, the whole thing is going to be cheaply pin somebody to set up my WrestleMania match. I think that's got to be their game plan with Miz. Yeah, but I don't know if I could die that it is going to be a Roman thing that he pins Roman Why, Why not? I mean, literally, Roman can spear him, Seth can give him the curb stop, Balor can double stop him. All Miz has to do is run in and, you know, literally cover the guy. Yeah, I can see Roman trying to get in the, the monster treatment that he tends to do, but the most changes where they hit with, like, five finishes and then eventually pinned. Maybe. If anybody pins him outright, it's Roman. Yeah, I think if it comes down to, like, those two, it's five two, which it probably should do, just based on the fact that they're the only two people that people realistically give a shot of winning this match, then Roman pins him outright. And to be fair, Roman's one of the only people that have pinned Braun outright, so it can be kind of believable. But in terms of other feuds being spawned off, like, you might want to do Elias versus Cena, not obviously for WrestleMania thing, but just as, like, an actual mini feud in the space between now and WrestleMania, because if John Cena versus Undertaker is going to happen, you're not going to have the Undertaker wrestle beforehand, so Cena needs someone to actually have matches with. I don't think Cena actually wrestles. Yeah, I, I want to talk a lot about John and, and Roman, too, because to me, those two guys have lost so much of their momentum in my eyes. John hasn't done anything really credible since he lost the title in the last Elimination Chamber. Roman, who, I know people hate him, and I know we joked a lot at the, on the Royal Rumble one that, oh my god, Roman versus Brock, what are we going to do? But all right, that should, that should be the match we're going towards here. Roman has lost to Miz twice. He's, he lost to Seth through a roll-up. And I know it's wrestling, and it's like he can just win this match and come out all strong, and Paul Heyman can do his magical mic work, and we'll be hyped for the Roman Brock thing, or as hyped as we can be. But Roman should be looking like a beast, and he's not. And to me, that's a problem, and that's caused me to actually really not even want to see him win this thing at this point. Well, it's the WWE way, way of booking things. Like, they've done this, they do this constantly with like, people that battles get big opportunities that they're essentially protected so they can lose as much as they possibly want them to lose because they know they're getting the opportunity next. So they only need to win one match and then they're switched on and then they're right where they want them to be. So the idea of Roman losing constantly just reinforces a lot of this first time almost that, oh, he's got to win this match because they're going to lose all this time. So they're clearly gearing him up to win this, which is the complete opposite way they should be. Yeah, like, if you watch WWE for a year, then you know this is the way they do things. And, and I get that, but it just, you're fighting Brock Lesnar in the main event of WrestleMania because I don't care if Shinsuke won the Rumble. Whatever the Brock Lesnar match is will likely be the main event, barring a John Cena. Well, will be the main event because he's the main event. He lost three WrestleMania. Uh, I just can't see Roman as a credible threat to Lesnar. Last time they were in the ring, Lesnar pinned him. You know what I mean? It, there's just they've done a lot of damage to Roman in my eyes, and John has really just lost all steam. I was excited when he came out on Raw a couple weeks ago and cut the promo where he's like, you know, I have to win this, or there's no road to WrestleMania for. Well, that was so fucking stupid. I mean, I, know, I understand like that's his kind of logic. This whole thing, but like, really, John, you're not gonna have a match at WrestleMania if you don't win this match. Really, John, you, John. But be serious, John, you can have a match at WrestleMania. Well, ever since... You didn't drag out his slight or Curtis, Curtis Axel or whatever, and you're still going to have a match on the main card at WrestleMania. Uh, ever since they did the thing with Stephanie four years ago, where Stephanie was like, who do you think you are, John? A spot on WrestleMania has to be earned. I think that's been his whole story since then, you know? Like, I have to earn my spot. Yeah, but it, it just, I understand that story, and I could go that narrative, but he always does get a match at WrestleMania, so it doesn't really change anything, does it? And on the flip side of this, there's Rollins, who the last couple weeks has, like, risen from the ashes of the Harlem Jason Jordan thing and been made to look like, I want to be Raw's Iron Man, and then he goes and has the incredible performance in the Gauntlet match. I would like to see Rollins you know, in a dream scenario, pick up the win here because he deserves a uh, high spot in Mania. That's, that's what I was thinking, like, in terms of, I think WWE shot themselves in the foot a little bit with that, in the idea that, I like the idea of Ron's being in the match, even if it does turn this in the chamber into a seven-man match, and I like the idea that he's now being pushed towards the main event scene, but they pushed him so hard that people get so pissed when Ron's in this match. The well, has him on this. I'm starting to get a little bit more onto the side of things that maybe Braun Strowman gets into the mix too. Because they're not really building towards the Strowman Miz thing, and they, they could, you know, they can kind of cop out and make it like that, but I think that Balor Miz makes a lot more sense. Yeah, it does. And Strowman has really been hitting the, the Brock Lesnar stuff hard. And they, they have to know that Braun is over. So there's part of me that's thinking that we might get a triple threat at WrestleMania. That that's maybe, not a match I want to see. Well, I mean, look at the way that they've been booking things. There's a good chance we can get Braun Strowman winning that championship instead of Roman Reigns. I'm and just... there's no other stuff that they've been building up, really. It's either they do a rush job with something else, where we do some kind of, like, the two of them pin each other. and, and well, we literally just saw that. I know, that's it's what's weird about it. I, I think that WWE's in a situation where they didn't think about a lot of these. And they're either going to replicate a lot of the same things, or they're going to book themselves in the corners. And I'm like, I'll be like what you said about rebooking WrestleMania 31. So really, you cop out again on Roman and Lesnar, and you throw the, the other guy that's over into the match just to avoid yep. having Roman and Lesnar? Because, because they didn't think about this a year ago. All they cared about a year ago was Brock said he wanted to fight Goldberg for the title and win the title at WrestleMania. And then they said, all right, we're going to throw out our plans with Jericho and Owens, and we're going to do that. And then it became, well, now we have Brock for the champion. I guess we build up Roman because we want Roman to be that guy. And then they spent this whole
has a huge heel, and the very next week they're like, I'm a big dog, yo, people love me, you know? If they would have just let Roman be the biggest piece of shit, he would have been the most over heel. Yeah. And they didn't want to do it. And in the process, Braun Strowman got over probably a lot more than they even expected him to. And they maybe not even expected him to be a babyface at the time. And now they put themselves in a corner where they were like, well, we can't do Braun winning the title from. Because remember, Braun, was, he had enough momentum at SummerSlam that a lot of people were sitting there going, maybe Braun wins the title. Maybe Braun wins it at Mercy. And it didn't end up happening. And that's because I think in WWE's mind, they were looking at this going, yeah, but we can't because we want to do that Roman Reigns match. And now they're at a time where they go, fuck, we probably should have done that. They were thinking, we squash Strowman, we give them the one on one with Lesnar, we squash Strowman there, and, you know, it's all systems go with. Yeah, then, Roman. then all we have is Roman left, and then we'll figure something else out for Strowman. And then in the meantime, they were like, Strowman's just getting more popular. All right, well, we'll put him in a match against Kane and uh, Lesnar, and that way he can lose and whatever. And then it's like, oh, we got elimination chamber coming up. We can't do anything that doesn't have Strowman. Therefore, what do we do with it? I think that there's a chance Strowman might win this as well. It might be Strowman and Roman that both win. It's not Elias. It's not Finn Balor. It's not John Cena. It's not The Miz, and it's not Seth Rollins. Either Reigns wins this on his own, or Strowman also wins it. I don't think Strowman wins it on his own. If they want to go with an absolute what the fuck, we could see Finn Balor win it. If they wanted to go with a what the fuck, and have Balor actually say, you know, I still haven't gotten my match for this title that I never lost. If Balor was ever going to have a Universal Championship match, would have had it already. Yeah, I don't think There's that's... no way they would be taking that to WrestleMania. I think There's he's no... either in that Intercontinental thing with Miz, or he's in the Battle Royal. Yeah, unfortunately. Those are the two real options. I think, based on the way they've been booking things, the logic dictates that really Strowman should be winning this match, because he's the one who's had the biggest, like, push towards Lesnar, and then you obviously could have the Balor versus Miz feud. And honestly, Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins actually sounds quite good for WrestleMania. I know they had that start match at the, um, the Gauntlet match, but have, having Reigns win that match could, like, so some seeds of dissension. And to be honest, that's going to be a better match than probably most other things that will go on WrestleMania if they was just uh, saying oh, correctly. Yeah. I love when Rollins and Reigns are in a story together. But I'm thinking right now, as I'm looking at the match, it's going to be Rollins and Balor and Mania in the inevitable, fuck, both guys need to win here. Who's Raw's Iron Man? Let's find out. Maybe throw the Miz in there for the IC title. Maybe Miz goes with Strowman. Maybe John Cena says, you know, Miz, I've never won the Intercontinental title. And they go that route with it. Because we know uh, John Cena the Miz at WrestleMania before. <laughs> but you know what? We've never seen John Cena win the Intercontinental title from the Miz at WrestleMania before. Um, I, I really, I can't stress enough that majority of the guys that are going that have shadow winning have been killed for me but yeah if we don't do roman and brock at mania then what the fuck was the last year for it's either yeah. roman and brock roman brock and braun or braun and brock and then roman does something else but i can't imagine that they're gonna skip over roman that's why i kind of think maybe it's a triple threat because i can't see Strowman being in that ronda rousey thing and i just sort of can't imagine braun winning that intercontinental title from the miz a little bit i'd rather wwe i mean i know this is asking for a lot but i'd rather wwe would admit the mistake that they were wrong to just later focus themselves onto the brock roman match wrestling yet and say okay Strowman is the big deal right now he has to be the match wrestling but then do you really do another Playing one on one with Brock and Braun? I'd rather see that than to see Roman Brock. I, I, I think the Roman Brock match would be a better match, but you just have to go with what's going to get the crowd excited. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we all know that Roman Lesnar match happens. It might be a trick match, might be a four or five star classic, whatever. The crowd goes shit over it, so no one's going to, it's not going to have the reaction they want. Right. And if that's the main event, it's going to just sour an entire WrestleMania. If you want the show to end on a good note, you have Strowman, like, build himself up from the previous loss against Lesnar. Basically, they have a carnage match where they're just destroying everything around rings or whatever. It doesn't have to be like a, um, a technical classic between the ropes. They just have a big monster brawl, and Strowman finally slays the beast. Mm-hmm. So you, you know you're getting Nakamura versus Styles, and that'll be the finesse match. Yeah, and you know that you have Lesnar on contract until SummerSlam, so then you have Roman, you have Roman versus Brock, and we want the major match at SummerSlam for an on-time match, and you have them like, back in number one contenders match when they face Brawl in the next pay-per-view. There's ways around that, that kind of stuff, but I'm just concerned what we're getting here is something that they didn't plan. Like that Oscar yeah. Nijax thing doesn't seem. Yeah. Good. I mean, if, if, if you're like put the gun to head and you ask for a prediction, I don't know how many people would not say Roman Reigns. Yeah, I mean that's what it boils down to with that. If, if I have to pick, I'm gonna pick Roman Reigns. Yeah, you have to like know. Like, there's been no secret the fact that the Roman Brock storyline has been what they focused on for WrestleMania. So, unless they've had a major change of heart in that time, you can't see anything else happening, really. Well, are you guys going Roman as well? Can't have to. I- I'm playing ending scenarios in my head. I I had a really convoluted one with Roman and John, where you know Taker finally decides to extract his revenge against Roman. You know, he pops up under the chamber or something. Tombstone's Roman. John says, "Hey, I'm not gonna win this way." So Taker says, "Fuck you, Tombstone's John." And then Roman capitalizes on that because Roman's you know isn't as morally sound. And that's how you get to John and Taker. People seem to still think that's happening. Or if you're really gonna go with a schmaz and somehow we get a three-way, Roman and Braun break the chamber, and, <laughs> and we go with. Oh my god, both men are knocked out. Who's going to the mania? Find out tomorrow on Raw. Yeah. I don't even know if WWE was so we just have to change the clouds on top of both. Well, no, I mean, like, I mean, one of them spheres the other through the chamber, you know, fence, and then it swings open, maybe a part falls off, I don't know, but I, I just can't see anything other than Roman Reigns is in the ring with Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Well, we're going to be tuning in this Sunday to figure out just what the hell WWE has planned, and there's a good chance that we end Elimination Chamber going, we don't fucking know, and we have to end up tuning in the Raw, and then Raw probably will go by in three hours, and we still don't know and stuff, but you'll right, find out well, when we find out. And... That's how it happened at the Rumble. We, we walked away from the Rumble, like, what the hell is going on with Ronda? <laughs> I do have uh, to that this pay-per-view, despite the fact that there's only, like, a couple of matches and there's still nothing confirmed, and even with the Rousey segment, segment which will probably suck the life out of the crowd, this is intriguing, at least. At least is asking a lot of questions. I agree. Like, it's well, intriguing in the sense that if you open up your front door in the morning, and you expect to see the newspaper, and you see half of a tricycle, and you go, I don't have any kids. Wait, why is it only half of a tricycle? Where's the other half? How did it get here? Why is it saying Mark on the side of it? Who's Mark? Like, it's just like, well, this kind of thing. I don't fucking understand. <laughs> and
And I'm still way more interested in the show than I will be for the as well. So. Yeah, that's true. But you guys should be tuning in to the review coverage on smartcomment.com and, of course, the post show as well. If you want to be aware of when we post that, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for notifications. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at smartcomment as well. Follow these guys on their Twitter accounts. And anything else they want to put, uh, be tossing out there, Colin, go ahead. Uh, I'll just say you can follow me on Twitter. I'll be quite full team. So go on Twitter now and do it. Yeah, I'm on social media at Dude Felice everywhere. D U D E F E L I C E. That's that's where you can follow me. And for an update on the Fanboys Anonymous side of things, everybody, the last time that I had checked it, it, we should have actually gotten some kind of a notification at some capacity about it not being monetized anymore if that was the case. And I'm going to check it one more time just to be sure with this kind of stuff. But the last time I had checked it, everything was showing up as monetized. Yep, it's still showing up as monetized. So I think hey, I might okay. be in the clear. And that is from all the support that you guys did with uh, watching the videos and bumping up the playlist uh, times and everything like that. That watch time was a huge factor. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if you want to be aware of how to help us in the future grow in other ways, there are Patreon accounts for Fanboys Anonymous and for Smartout Moment. They're just .com slash Fanboys Anonymous, .com slash uh, Smartout Moment. You can find all that stuff all over the place and stuff like that. Uh, if you are curious about anything else, like the t-shirt designs and stuff, just ask, drop a comment somewhere, and I'll let you in on any of that information. But for now, this is a two-hour long edition. Editing time, you'll get it at some point, <laughs> so you'll be here when you hear it. Thanks for watching this, everybody. Drop a comment below. Tell us what you thought of our predictions, what you think your predictions are, and anything else you want to chime in on. This has been another Smartout Moment. We are being counted out. Bye.